if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, 10 years old, around 10 years old, mm -hmm. is that when you came to the U.S.? So 10 years old, I uh, uh, escaped Iran six weeks after Khomeini died. Um, June 3rd, Khomeini dies. I lived in Iran for 10 years. Six weeks later, we escaped. We go to Germany at a refugee camp. And then November 28, 1990, we came to the States. Okay, now, when you say escaped, what, what does that look like? What does that mean? Well, I'm 10 years old at the time, and any boy in Iran that turns 10 years old, you cannot leave because you have to serve the military there. So my family had to escape uh, 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 in a way that, yes, we're coming back, but we never came back. This is why I haven't been to Iran since then. And although I'm thinking about visiting uh, later on this year, if I do, there's a, a possibility of them keeping me because I didn't fulfill my obligation of serving in their military, and I served in the enemy's military, which is America. Okay. Wow. Okay, so you're going to go back. I'm, uh, uh, I'm not going to go back with my kids and my wife. I'm going to take... Uh, some of our camera guys, so if we get arrested, we're all getting arrested here, pr making a nice video. What do you think, Jessica? <laughs> we're gonna get arrested she doing that. that <laughs> <laughs> she crossed her arms saying, shoot, we're not getting arrested. <laughs> wow. So that's where we're very, at. Very brave of you. Okay, so do you remember that time? You know, oh. I know you, you were young, when you say an escape, so how did that, was it like, okay, it's 12 midnight, we have, we have, we have on our back, and we're gonna get on the truck. Like, what was what was that night like? Or yeah, let me day? tell you. I mean, I, I clearly remember when we were, uh, we left everything behind. My uh, mother owned a Renault, which uh, uh, they call Renault in America, but a Renault. And my dad had a Gian. My uh, father stayed behind to try to sell everything. We snuck into the uh, airport and we were going through the entire gate. They were checking everything out. Uh, uh, with us and we're just I am just scared because nothing is legit until you cross the border and they let you drink alcohol so the the most beautiful lines were when they said we have crossed the borders you we are now serving alcohol would anybody like to drink alcohol <laughs> that was the magical line when you know you were free so it was a uh, I remember that last conversation with my dad when we were exchanging and giving giving jewelry back the less jewelry you'll have the more they'll let you go through because they're gonna ask you why are you taking all them. It's just a small little things that doesn't have a lot of meaning, but I remember those things vividly. Um, when you came to America, and because I know before you came here, you had said in one of your videos that you were watching Rocky, you were watching American movies, you were getting that mindset. What did you think of the place when you arrived? I was looking for Scarface, man. I was looking for Sylvester Stallone. I was looking for the Gremlins. I was looking for the Ghostbusters, you know, because I landed in New York. I was looking for, you know, uh, 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 what's his name? Godfather. What was his name in the movie? Uh, Corleone, right? I was looking for all these guys because these are the movies we watched. And I, and I didn't see any one of them, you know? I didn't see any one of them. No, I just kind of went to the airport and I'm thinking everyone's a celebrity. Literally, my initial reaction was I thought every American was a celebrity to me. How crazy is that? I thought every American was a celebrity. We landed in L.A., uh, at that time in Glendale, uh, they called us uh, uh, phobes or fobs, which is fresh off the boat, you know, so okay. they, okay. they, uh, I had, I didn't speak English very well. So certain words I had a hard time with like, uh, at that time, the show that everybody watched was Gilligan's Island. I don't know if you remember Gilligan's yeah, Island, Gilligan's Island. Uh, yeah. except yeah. I used to call it Gilligan's Island, you know, because <laughs> the S is, you know, silent and I don't know the difference. I didn't yeah. say Wednesday. I said Wednesday. Uh, uh, you know, there were certain, you know, government, I would say government, you know, I, so I was entertainment for a lot of the white kids, man, who were looking at me saying, who is this guy who doesn't know how to speak English? So, uh, 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 that, that's, that's how the whole thing got started. You know, when you were coming up as a kid, but were you picked on, were you, was life oh, yeah. hard for you? I mean, was, was I mean, listen, I'm, I don't want to sound like a victim because I'm not a fan of victims. I don't want to feel mm. like, you know, I was, uh, for me. Uh, I was the uh, luckiest man alive because I can eat banana. And in Iran, if you had one banana every five years, you were rich. So you're trying to tell me every day I can eat banana? That's crazy. I mean, you're out of your mind. I'm eating ananas, ananas is pineapple. That's a rich man's fruit. You know, mm. you're trying to tell me I can eat a kiwi a month? 
No, man. I mean, this is this is heaven for me. And I'm living in California where the greatest sports team in the history of mankind, Los Angeles Lakers, you know, mm. and, and I'm able to live in a city like that. No, mm. I, I was I was in heaven. For me, it was uh, it was great because, listen, even the worst day in America was still better than the best day in Iran being bombed on. So it didn't matter what was taking place, man. I was just a happy kid. Wow. Okay, so you're learning the language, you're going to school, you're, 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 you're kind of, you know, thrown into this American culture. How is school for you? How, what is that like? I was a distracted kid. Uh, the only class I paid attention to was uh, 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 math. I liked math a lot. I had a 1.8 GPA, and then I paid attention uh, to my history class and ceramics class because the girls were dropped at gorgeous in those two classes. Uh, and then outside of that, I did very little attention. I had a teacher named Mr. Woods who really liked me, and I had mm -hmm. a teacher named Miss Sinclair, who uh, 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 eventually was a major in the army. She was the one that encouraged me to join the army. She was very good uh -huh. to me. So you know, uh, I wasn't I wasn't a kid in high school. That by the way, I've never played organized sports in my entire life. I'm six five two forty. If you see me, I'm six five two forty. I've never played organized sports. Uh, wow. At 13, 14 years old, I uh, lied on a job application because my family needed money. So I said, I'm 16 years old, and they hired me at haagen And I started getting paid at haagen I was, um, you know, making, uh, what do you call it, banana splits. And I made some ridiculous banana splits for people at the mall, man. Glendale, mm. yeah, if you came and had my banana split, you'd remember till today <laughs> is how good that banana split was. Wow. We had a good time. Okay. So military, they gave, what did that do for you? What, did they give you some discipline? What, what was that experience like? So, I mean, listen, I graduate high school. I'm going to Glendale Community College. One night, I run out of money. I ask my sister to let me live with her. So one night, uh, uh, we, this was in uh, uh, Encino, California, Burbank Boulevard and Havenhurst. I'm in her apartment. Um, she has a studio. It's not even a one bedroom. I'm sleeping on the floor. The jacuzzi downstairs, I had like eight friends downstairs at the jacuzzi. And we were drinking a little bit. We were contributing to the stock of vodka around the world that night. And uh, uh, next thing you know, it's 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, just bad situation. And uh, uh, the management comes, wants to evict my sister. And, you know, I go to sleep. I don't make it to my job in the morning. Um, so I get fired by Burger King, which out of all the jobs in the world, if you're going to get fired from one of them, Burger King's not a bad one to get fired from. So yeah. I get fired. And then that morning when I go downstairs to go to my car so I can make it to work and go to school, they stole my car, the 1983 Toyota Corolla that six months later we found it in Tijuana when I got a police report that the car ended up being in Tijuana. So that day, I called my dad at 10 o'clock in the morning when I woke up and the car wasn't there. I said, hey dad, uh, uh, I need you to take me to the recruiting station because I'm joining the army. Mm. I didn't call a friend, I didn't call my girlfriends, I didn't call anybody, I just said, and, and, and my dad hung up, came, picked me up, he said, that's exactly where you need to go. I went to the recruiting station, I said, if you can get me a job that I leave tomorrow, I'll join today. If I need to wait three to six months, I'm not joining the army. They gave me a Hummer mechanic position, four weeks later I was in the army. Wow. Yep. How long did you stay in the army? Two and a half years. They had a two. delayed entry program at the time that was two and a half year program. I think I got $25,000 of GI Bill that they mm -hmm. were given at the time. Uh, but yeah, I went to the Army two and a half years. Just the, one of the best decisions I ever made in my life is joining the Army. Why is that? You had to do laundry on your own. You had to fold your clothes. You had to clean. The expectation was higher. You had to wake up early. You worked 100 hours a week. I'm in an environment that people are from Mississippi, Alabama, North Dakota, South Dakota. They've never met an Iranian before, so it taught me to learn culture. I learned about other cities, other states. I learned how to handle people that had a lack of education about Iran and stereotypes, and I had to learn how to overcome that and communicate that with them. Just a lot of good, good skills, a lot of good things that military offered, lots of them. What was it like the day you got out of the military? Oh, the let me tell you, man, it was, I know the feeling, and I, I only did two and a half years. When I ETS and I got out, it was June of 99. I got out because I was also becoming a senior, uh, becoming a citizen, because at the time I joined not being a citizen of US, I just had a green card. 
So I went and became a citizen, and for the first month, I had no clue what I was gonna be doing. Like literally, I had no clue what was gonna happen. Mm. Uh, I didn't have a steady job. I went to become a Hummer mechanic for a Hummer dealership in Camarillo. They were gonna pay me thirteen fifty an hour, but they only needed one Hummer mechanic, and they already had a guy. So outside of that skill set, I know how to shoot a rifle. It's not like I'm gonna go around being a hitman. You know, they're just I, I look too much like a hitman. So that would be a bad job uh, uh, for me to do. So yeah. I went in. I was a bodybuilder at the time. I said I'm gonna work at a gym. So I went and worked at Bally Total Fitness and got into sales. Got into sales. So now you're like a what is that like a physical trainer or something like that? Or are you selling? I, I didn't sell personal training. I sold memberships. Is what I did. I sold memberships for you to become a member of Bally's. Got it. How long did you stay there? Nine months. Nine months until I met a girl from a, 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 a real beautiful African-American girl named Janvier. We started dating and she was an advisor at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. We met at Venice Beach. Uh, she approached me, we started talking and we'd go out all the time, had a wonderful time with this girl and she says, what are you doing with your career? I said, I'm gonna be a you know top gym membership salesman in America. And she starts laughing at me like, what the hell is this guy saying? I said, I'm good at selling these memberships, I'm telling you. She said, no, you're not gonna be doing this. She says, you need to figure out a different products to sell. So she encouraged me to go into the financial industry. Uh, I applied, I got a you know few offers from Morgan Stanley Dean Witter and that's how I got started in the financial industry the day before 9-11. So, so what gives you the confidence to start PHP on your own at this time? I believe that capitalism works. I believe mm. capitalism is a mathematical formula. And the reason why I believe capitalism works is because if you figure out a way to treat people better or do something better uh, and then differentiate yourself in an area or two, or, and then you have a market. And I knew that's exactly what was gonna happen. I'm a firm believer that if you don't take care of your people, somebody else will. I am a very firm believer of that. Uh, marriage works that way. If you take care of your girl, you take care of your husband, what are you worried about him leaving you or her leaving? If she does, that's her fault. It's, your, it's her loss. It's his loss. It's not your loss. I don't control if you want to do something foolish. I'm comfortable with the way I treated you. I don't mind if I lose a salesperson or an agent or an employee because I'm going to do my part to make sure this thing's going to be a great opportunity. Okay, so you, you're growing a family. You have PHP going on and all this. Is it hard? Or are, you, are you waking up in a day and you're stressed like, oh my gosh, I have all this? Or are you like waking up happy like I'm fulfilling my dream? What, what's the yeah, problem? I mean, listen, a big part of a lot of responsibility is trying to calm yourself down to not really overwhelm yourself with all the responsibilities you have. Because if you do that, man, you can have a panic attack every day. And, and that happened to me back in 2012 when I was like, how am I going to handle this? How am I going to handle this? First time I had kids, I'm like, oh my gosh, kids, cost, family, wife, business. You know, this is just too much. But... You know, it's, it's uh, 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 I believe in a higher power, and when you believe mm -hmm. in a higher power, I understand I'm not trying to be God. Some people have a God syndrome, they want to be God. I have zero desire to be God. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I got the highest power around me, protecting me, and being with me in spirit and my family, and I'm gonna do my part. So because I have that level of trust in it, my confidence is at the highest level, because I know a very, very, a uh, big calling is there and a big responsibility is there and I want to deliver. Simple as that.